On this episode of Hands on Cars, Kevin strips paint and sprays epoxy primer on the Camaro, finds the Winfield Award winner at the Eastwood Summer Classic, and then has some fun in the American Muscle Project Coyote Mustang. Kevin Tate, sitting in front of Eastwood headquarters, Pottstown, Pennsylvania. I'm in a rental car. It's a Corolla. It sounds like a vacuum cleaner. This thing's an appliance. Oh, but it's got a sport mode. I gotta park this turd because they said they were gonna toss me the keys to something that was a little more fun to drive. Gotta go check it out. Kevin, what do you think of the uh, 2014 American Muscle Project Coyote Mustang? I want to get out of this traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm in prison. You gotta get out and stretch your legs a little bit. Absolutely, but you know, in traffic, it's subdued. It's very well behaved. Just listen to it. Oh, it sounds fantastic. It's the pipes, uh, long tube headers. Well, and they're stainless headers, and that really helps a lot with that tone. It gives it that kind of a mid-range growly tone instead of the deep rumble. And with the long tubes, I'm guessing, just from what I understand about long tube headers, we're probably picking up about 12 horsepower just from the header swap. You know, you, you take an already great looking car, throw some tasteful, you know, bolt-on stuff, the graxium lights, the headlight covers. This thing looks sinister, man. It's, it's, a, it's a mean looking car. It really is, and, and it backs it up with performance, too. It sounds mean. And it's got sticky Mickey Thompson's, the 300 Treadwear um, radials on it. And so we're going to test out this Mickey Thompson. We're going to have to test traction. Yeah, we're we have to, to test traction. That's mandatory. So, you know, and you throw power at a car like this, and with a two piece drive shaft, it's just another a point to fail. So, they solved that problem. With a one piece drive shaft. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it, it, it gets it a little bit. It gets it a little bit, and that's not going crazy. That's just rolling through the gears a little bit. This thing's begging for it, man. This thing is begging to be played with. I love this car. And it is Pennsylvania, so there's been construction on all seven roads we've been on in the last, uh, what, five miles. Hi. Hi. Can I get a receipt, please? Thank you. Hey, do you know if there's any speed traps, any radar up here? We're not told of anything. Okay. She said no. <laughs> Yeah. They probably don't see that coming through the uh, toll booth very often. Probably not. Probably not. All right, we got really sticky compound tires. Wow. This is sink or swim, pal. This is, uh, we're pulling some G's right here. Those Mickey Thompsons are holding us in place, man. That's... That was, that was, actually, that was pretty impressive. Yeah, that's just an on-ramp thing. We're, what, doing 45 miles an hour, but, man, it... It holds it. I feel like I just, one of the videos where I should have been a girl in a bikini. <laughs> like, ah, screaming. <laughs> I saw you tense up a little bit. Okay, so we're doing 60, no, we're doing 70 miles an hour. We're at 1800 RPM. I remember a buddy in high school had a 68 Chevelle with a 396, and it was a four speed car. He had a big, I think it was a big Muncie uh, gearbox in it, low gears, 411s in the back. That sucker would get gallons to the mile. You know, and what a beast. Just an unbelievably brutal car to drive. They've got this stuff dialed in. They must have done a ton of R&D on this car to get it sorted like this. Bolt on stuff. Well, I grew up in BC, Canada, and my Uncle Herb had a &H used auto parts. Uh, he had cars from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s when I was a kid. Bullet nose Studs, 49 Studebakers. He had a row, double stacked bullet noses. He had them all categorized in the wrecking yard. That's the kind of cars I grew up in. No wonder you love cars. Oh, yeah, how can you not? Yeah. It's just this tie-in. You see something with old faded paint and it just brings you back. It's So that's that's where I get it. You know, I, I grew up around that stuff. And Our family car when I was born was a 67 Camaro. Oh, no way. My dad bought it when he was in high school. That's cool. And then eventually parked it. And then when I was 14, and I convinced them that I should be allowed to, make space to bring the Camaro in. 
which did not make my mom very happy, seeing how her car was still sitting outside the garage. Right. And a Camaro that hadn't run in 10 years was now <laughs> in the garage. So, uh, I guess we should get back to Eastwood, or? Well, we got somebody else's insurance policy. <laughs> that's, that's a plus. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for watching Hands On Cars. I'm Kevin Tates and this is Project Z Sled, our low buck pro touring 1978 Z28 Camaro. And we are finally done with the process of replacing metal in the rusty POS. And we are by no means finished. We got tons of cool projects to do and tons of cool tech to show you guys. Now the entire bottom, well, the entire body has been coated with Eastwood one-to-one -one black epoxy. And right here, everywhere that you see a seam, well, it's been coated with a seam sealer to make it ready for the next step, which is a spray-on bed liner to protect the bottom and make it look 100%. But before we moved on, I wanted to show you this. Now you F-Body Ninjas will recognize these as Detroit Speed and Engineering subframe connectors. They're a welding connector that welds not only to the chassis, but also to the subframe itself, really locking that car in, stiffening the chassis up. But what I wanted to show you is how to do these cool looking seams that can really do a lot to enhance your project. Now I've made a little demo panel here that'll show you just how easy it is to get a really nice professional repair effect on your replacement panels. And it starts with Eastwood's brushable seam sealer. Now I've made this little demo panel and it's just going to give you a nice example of what we did for the rest of the car. Always, always you want to clean your welds with a wire brush like we've done and then it's just a simple matter of framing that weld. I love these peel away spreader boards and they work great for more than just fillers. And so we're just doing a demo. I'm just gonna get a little bit of this stuff out. Set it on the spreader board. And you don't even have to be neat. Now that you've got a real crisp border, then you can just kind of slather it on. Here's the magic. Take off our tape. Now, we're gonna bathe it in pre-painting prep and just take our finger with the glove and smooth it out. There, now that looks nice and tidy. It's got a crisp edge. By the time you either undercoat that, paint it, or do what we're gonna do and spray a bed liner coating over top of it, man, you've got a nice professional look underneath the bottom, well, heck, even in the floor or the trunk of your project. And with all of that done, the first project we're going to show you how to do is to cover all of that up with a bed liner coating. And the coating that we're going to use is a waterborne product, which means it's more environmentally friendly and it's less toxic for you to use. And it's going to give you a really nice textured effect on the bottom of the panel that in the first place hides a lot of sins. It covers up a lot of stuff so we don't have to mirror finish the bottom of this. It's not a show car. It's a go car, as well as it offers a lot of sound insulation properties. It becomes a truck bed type coating on the bottom of the car. It's a trend that a lot of the cool kids are doing, and we're going to do it too. This is POR15 spray in bed liner. Now, what I like about this stuff is that it's easy to apply and it leaves a nice textured coating, but more importantly, it remains permanently flexible. Unlike some of the catalyzed bed liner coatings out on the market, they tend to get really brittle. And this, because it remains flexible, is going to offer some nice chip resistance as well as a cool insulation factor and give us the look that we want. And since Zed Sled is black, well, we don't have to change colors and we don't have to paint it. But before we get all carried away spraying our bed liner on, there's a little bit of housekeeping we got to do. Waterborne is just that. It's waterborne. That's the solvent that carries it to the panel. And on bare steel, it's going to rust. So we got to do something about that. Before we spray a coating on there, I'm going to clean up these welds around the subframe connectors because they're just a little bit rusty. And we don't want to cover that up because it'll flake off like a sunburn. That ain't good.
do some pre-painting prep. Give the rest of the metal a little bit of tooth and clean it at the same time. Now, if you've never used this stuff, use this stuff. This is awesome. This is 2K Aerospray, and it's not just paint. This is an epoxy primer, and it's so simple, but it's such a nice professional coating. Here's how it works. Turn the can upside down, turn the cap onto the membrane. When you hear the pop, you know that it's released the catalyst inside the rest of the coating. So then shake it up for a couple of minutes, and you've got a true 2K coating that's catalyzed with a 48 hour pot life at room temperature. Even longer if you throw it in the refrigerator, but I didn't say to do that. Um, it's a catalyzed coating. There's a catalyst, there's a hardener in it, so I'm wearing a good mask. You should too. Set that up, unreal. This POR bed liner requires two coats, about 15 or 20 minutes in between each coat. The cool thing is that if you've got anything unused in your gun, you can pour it back into the container because it's non-catalyzed. But the real magic is in the applicator. Now this is a gun that I've had kicking around. You can do this with a regular ordinary body Schutz gun, but this thing is honking. Look at that. It's at least a 3 8 orifice, and uh, this is going to get the job done. It's a siphon-fed gun that I had kicking around, so well, P for me, I'm a tool junkie. I had something that's <laughs> really going to rock and roll on this thing. So while the bed liner coating is drying on the bottom of Z sled, we're going to take on another project, stripping the paint off the panels that haven't been stripped or blasted yet. Now in the 90s, all three of the big three automakers had a huge problem with delams, delamination, paint coming off in sheets. I know you've seen these cars going down the road. And when I was in collision repair, the best method we found, or the fastest, maybe not the best, was to take 36 grit paper on a rotary uh, sander, just like these guys, and strip it down to bare metal, build it back up with epoxy, then the top coats, and kick it out the door. It was very effective, but it was a kind of a brutal way to get there. Uh, the other thing is if you ever hit rust like that, your paper is shot. And that might have been the fastest way to get the factory paint down to bare steel, but it probably wasn't the best way. And Eastwood has got something way better. Check this out. These are stripping discs, and they come in a variety of different sizes and different grits. Take a closer look. They utilize a super strong hook and loop fastener, better known as Velcro. And it's super strong. There's a huge footprint, a couple of different styles, and like we said, different sizes, as well as the grits that can finely polish the metal and, and take the paint off without profiling, without digging giant freaking holes in it. And the other benefit to a porous type of a stripping disc like this over top of the 40 grit or 36 grit paper is it stays cool. It doesn't build up a lot of heat on your panel. So if you've got a late model car or a thin or a large piece of metal, this isn't going to heat the panel up and it's not going to warp it. And it's pretty elementary, Watson. You just got to get in there and take the paint off. Hands on Cars is brought to you by the Eastwood Company. When you're restoring a car, truck, or motorcycle, Eastwood has everything you need to do the job right. Eastwood, since 1978. So what did we manage to scare up on the show field of the 2014 Eastwood Summer Classic, but the winner of the coveted Winfield Award, presented by Gene Winfield himself at the Wright Coast Syracuse Nationals. This beautiful 48 Studebaker pickup is the consummate street rod truck with no stone left unturned.
This Winfield Award winner sports a perfect 6-inch chop and removable hardtop, but that's only the beginning of the awesome modifications that Quality Custom Rides of Lancaster, Pennsylvania made to this amazing Studebaker. And of course, Eastwood products helped with this incredible build, like the shrinker stretcher that was used in much of the metal fabrication or the rust encapsulator which was used to protect the metal. It has a custom third brake light that's flush mounted in the roof, as well as flush mounted windshield and carbon fiber door panels. The mind-blowing paint job includes black diamond on the top and orange mica on the bottom, which is a custom mix of pearls to match the orange suede. Under the hood is a blown Chevy 350 bored over 60 thousandths, making it a 358 cubic inch powerhouse that's matched to a Holley 4150 carburetor and a B&M supercharger. It's got an HEI ignition and low car carb linkage, shifter, and cables. The engine, heads, transmission, and rear are all smoothed and painted. And the firewall was fabricated for this truck, and the hood hinges are mounted under the dash with gas strut assist. The custom-built chassis features a triangulated four-link rear suspension, Mosier axles, Willwood brakes, and custom-painted front and rear QA1 shocks, with many of the underhood and undercar components coated in Eastwood's chassis black paint. The front of this truck is one customized piece after another, featuring a 1938 Ford Deluxe grille grafted onto the 48 Studebaker front end, which was then grafted onto a 37 Ford hood. The headlights are fringed with integrated turn signals, and the underhood is molded carbon fiber. During the restoration, Eastwood's rust encapsulator paint was used to coat many of the components. The custom-built bed has a trunk at the tailgate and a hidden gas filler, plus custom-made taillights and lenses as well as carbon fiber license plate holder and hidden lights. The wooden bed floor is stained ash and the running boards were built to match. Like the outside of this truck, the interior is also a work of art with suede seats and headliner and a carbon fiber console. The dash is a reworked 41 Stude Commander dash that features carbon fiber as well as the gauges from the 41 Commander. The wooden floor is built to match the truck bed and running boards, and it has a Flaming River steering column and wheel, as well as updated auto-dimming rear-view mirror and interior lights, plus power windows and a vintage air system to keep the ride comfortable. This dude rides on Mickey Thompson's Sportsman SR tires mounted on vintage Q billet 15-inch aluminum wheels. And don't forget, the underneath of this pickup looks just as good as the rest of it, but you won't see any wiring, brake, or fuel lines because they're all hidden inside the frame rails. The guys at Quality Custom Rides are proud of the fact that they do everything in-house and pride themselves on building anything that you can dream up. And the best part about this truck? The owner drives it all the time. It's not a trailer queen. And they won the Winfield Award. Now I'm going to start off with a low RPM. I'm probably going to go with about 600 to 1,000 RPM and just see what this guy does. I think it's going to do pretty good. Now here's something kind of cool. Now what this looks like to me is that there's clear coat, base color, some sort of primer. Right here we've got the original paint the original primer or the EDEP coat, and then bare steel. So this, in a kind of a roundabout way, talks to me and tells me that this car's had two paint jobs on it. And that's kind of what we thought, it's kind of what we found all over the car, but you're doing pretty good on stripping though. All right, if you look, for the most part, everything is good. The sealer's still intact. The door skin is not rusty. A little bit of surface rust here, but that is, that's just an easy thing to prep. Throw a little fast hitch on there, and we'll deal with the rest when it's time to paint. Okay, so the door is naked. It's stripped beautifully and it's stripped quickly. And we're not done yet. We're not ready for any kind of a primer. And here's why, look at this. See that pitted rust in there? 
The stripper's not gonna get that. Sandpaper's not gonna get that. Even those beautiful cleaning discs aren't gonna get that. So we can either media blast that with something ultra fine or we can chemically change that and get it ready for the next step, which is what we're gonna do with our old buddy, Fast Edge. Ah! Oh. Sticky to sticky works until the sticky hits the sticky you don't want to stick to. Sticky to sticky works until the sticky hits the sticky you don't want to stick to. Hit its ears back. Won't mess up our jams with overspray, cause extra work. The Eastwood one to one uses a one to one mix. No surprises there. For other tips on mix ratios and properly getting the precise mixture, you can go to eastwood.com. We've got some great videos on there that explain these mixing cups and the mixing ratios. Thanks for watching Hands On Cars. Minimal investment, minimal time investment. This thing looks very presentable. And now we're ready for the next steps, which are suspension, engine, bodywork, all this stuff that we bathed in epoxy gets to go back on the car and we can finally make it into the vehicle that we know it could be. Thank you for watching Hands On Cars. Keep up with us in CarCraft Magazine online. And let's do this job right with Eastwood. On the next episode of Hands-On Cars, Kevin starts the bodywork on the Z28 and then brings you the best cars from the SEMA show in Las Vegas.